Hello friends, this video on photosynthesis in higher plants part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have spoken about so many of the early experiments which all together gave us what are information? They told us, okay, there is a process by which plant prepare food in the form of glucose, that glucose is stored in the form of starch. This process happens only in the green parts because the green parts have chlorophyll. Now, the green parts absorb only the red and blue region of the visible light of the electromagnetic spectrum. This process takes place only in presence of sunlight. It does not happen in dark. During this process, oxygen is released and carbon dioxide is taken in. So if you sum up all these facts, you will see that you end up arriving at what is now known as photosynthesis. Now, it was known from the past few experiments that in this process, carbon dioxide is taken in it combines with water to form oxygen and sugar. So from the past few experiments, what did we see? We see that oxygen is released from the plant because plants release them. From Priestley's experiment, we saw them and even Ingenhouse proved that only the green plants release oxygen. So why green plants release oxygen? Due to the presence of Chlorophyll. So, presence of chlorophyll again is a must for this process to take place. Now, this process of release of oxygen takes place only in presence of sunlight. So, this has to happen in presence of sunlight. Right? Food is prepared in the form of glucose and it is stored in the form of starch. Stored as starch. Right? What about water? Water is supplied to the plants by watering, like we all water the plants, right? So that is how we supply water to the plants, so the water reaches to the plant and this water combines with carbon dioxide which plants take in from the atmosphere through their stomata. We all know the stomatal opening and closing, so whenever the stomata opens, it takes in carbon dioxide and it gives out oxygen. So it takes in carbon dioxide. So this is how the entire process takes place. So now the question is, where does the oxygen come from? Now this oxygen here. So if you see this oxygen here, there are two possibilities. Carbon dioxide also has oxygen, water also has oxygen. Now the question is whether the oxygen comes from the water or the oxygen comes from the carbon dioxide. So from where does the oxygen comes? Because if the, these two are your reactants and these two are the products. So from where is the oxygen coming? Where it, whether it is coming from water or it is coming from carbon dioxide. In order to clear this doubt, another set of experiment was performed just to prove whether the oxygen comes from water or it comes from carbon dioxide. So the, a demonstration was given by a scientist named Cornelius Van Nee. So he performed this experiment to prove that the oxygen comes from water and not from carbon dioxide. So what did he do? He replaced the water like like earlier the, the normal process was carbon dioxide plus water gives oxygen plus sugar in the form of glucose so what did he do he replaced water with hydrogen sulfide that is h2o was replaced by h2s and what did he observe he observed that when this happened then the product was sulfur. So instead of oxygen, sulfur was produced and sugar. So you see, when H2O was not there, now if the oxygen was coming from carbon dioxide, in that case, when you replaced H2O, that should not have made any difference because anyways, the oxygen is coming from carbon dioxide. But that is not the case. When we replaced water with H2S, oxygen was not at all produced. 
So sulfur was produced. That means the oxygen was actually coming from water. In fact, there was another scientist named Martin Kamen who performed another experiment with a radioactive isotope of oxygen, that is O18. So there was another, let me talk about the other scientist as well. There was another scientist named Martin Kamen. So what did he do? He performed an experiment with the radioactive isotope of oxygen that is O18. And there he used H2O. So he used H2O but this O was nothing but the radioactive isotope O18. And what did he observe? He observed that when he performed the same reaction, oxygen was produced this time. Because water was used, so oxygen was produced. But the oxygen which was produced was a radioactive oxygen. Now since this water was radioactive in nature, Therefore, the oxygen which was produced was also radioactive in nature. Now, had the top, this oxygen been coming from carbon dioxide, in that case, even though this oxygen is radioactive, this should not have been radioactive because this was dependent on this. But that is not the case. So, from here also, it was proved that oxygen comes from water and not from carbon dioxide. Right? So, this was proved... So what was the observation? Observation was that radioactive water produced radioactive oxygen as I mentioned. Also radioactive carbon dioxide produced radioactive sugar. So the similar thing was performed with carbon dioxide. When the oxygen of carbon dioxide was made radioactive, in that case it was seen that the oxygen which was produced was not radioactive but the sugar was radioactive. So it was concluded that in that reaction Water gives oxygen and carbon dioxide gives sugar. So basically the oxygen comes from water and the sugar comes from the carbon dioxide. So this was proved by using the radioisotope technique by Martin Kamen and it was also proved by Cornelius Van Neel by using H2S instead of H2O. So the conclusion was carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrates or sugar. So sugar, glucose or starch, they are nothing but carbohydrates. So carbon dioxide will reduce to carbohydrates and water is oxidized to oxygen. So basically the reaction of photosynthesis is a redox reaction. That is a reduction oxidation reaction. So in the uh, reaction of photosynthesis, which is CO2, plus H2O gives sugar. Right now, I'm not writing the formula for sugar to keep it simple, plus O2. So what happens here is carbon dioxide to sugar is reduction. H2O to oxygen is oxidation. So overall, this is an oxidation reduction reaction or a redox reaction. The overall reaction of photosynthesis. Right? So these were some of the important early experiments which all together led to the discovery of the process of photosynthesis. So I hope these experiments are clear to you. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.